so far you have probably heard a lot of international comrades, mostly from all over Europe. That is why I'm really happy to now talk with some comrades on the other side of the Atlantic. I'm here with Amy and Black from New York City and they will tell us a bit about why they are here, what they are doing and also a little event both are now organizing in their home city. So maybe we can start with both of you introducing yourself and tell us a bit about the Anarchist Book Fair. Hello, my name is Amy. This is my second year organizing the Anarchist Book Fair, so quite new to it, but it's a really beautiful sort of spider web where art, film, music, philosophy, literature, workshops, panel discussions, everything sort of overlapping and on top of each other and you don't really know where one thing ends and the other begins and I think for me that's what's most beautiful about the book fair is just everything all at once and then it all just sort of culminates into energy itself which I think is the heart of anarchism, but uh, yeah, what have, w this is the founder, by the way, <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, my name is Black, I mean, uh, we found the book fair in 2006, no, with a group, uh, the anarchists, I think as soon as I moved from San Francisco, where I used to work together with Bound Together for the anarchist book fair in San Francisco, where I learned a lot, to... Um, to the New York where we get together this group and then we found the book fair at uh, 2007 was our first one and this is still now I mean now we are being the 17 years of the anarchist book fair in New York we have not just the book fair uh, we have the film festival we have a music festival and you have a narco art lab you know a narco art lab is about collective creation and uh, the film festival is about uh, many countries and the issues that Anarchy face to films. For example, now we just met people from Chile and we just invite them no, uh, uh, to, to our film festival. I mean, we are here and now in Saint Samir, I mean, no, in Switzerland gathering that's amazing because I come in the first one that was 12 years ago 10 years in reality it's in 10, 10 years man now because the coffee and everything was a little late but it's incredible how they grow how they you know so efficient and see so much anarchists together is healing for me you know all the time I want we building other other world and <laughs> that we are here for yeah, really cool. I mean, um, we've talked in advance before because uh, you said that it's probably pretty hard to just talk broadly about the anarchist movement all over the United States. That's why it's uh, really interesting for us to now get a deeper view of the insight of the New York City anarchist scene. So maybe you can talk a bit about this and introduce us to the anarchist movement, maybe different anarchist groups inside of New York City. I think what sticks out very prominently with the anarchist scene in New York is there's such a strong intersection between anarchism and art and uh, like the there's many countercultures of artists and anarchists that are very intertwined and those are very melded together and there's a lot of performative anarchism or activism that's done through performance arts in New York City uh, like a narco art lab, they've done things where they spill blood in front of the stock exchange building and it's, uh, organs in front of org the, yeah. the, the, the rush uh, yeah, when they start, we, we deliver <laughs> organs, uh, remember, yeah. organs, peers, uh, we, we come we, together with Non Grata, is a group from Estonia, and then we all together deliver like piece of bodies in, in Russia, we deliver like courier, you know, the, 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 we take the, 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 the body parts and deliver in Russia consulate in, in, in New York City. With a group from Estonia, yeah. from Estonia from called Non Grata, together with uh, Anarcho Art Lab. We like to do a lot of collaborations with international groups, you know, that we are for. I mean, with indigenous in Brazil, with Non Grata in Estonia and so on. I mean, that is a kind of how you art uh, 
performance we do we have been doing that means put blood in black rock for example building the biggest corporation that's in new york you know also if we can talk about for example anarchism in new york i mean they since uh, occupy wall street to you know black live matter black live matter was one of the collaboration that many anarchists together with Occupy Wall Street did. No, I think in the scene of New York is really intense sometimes, but I think uh, it's pretty, when you want to organize, we do, you know, I mean, we, I think, you know, like France now doing, I mean, we do our part, mm -hmm. anarchists, we try to do our part. But it still involves a lot of strategizing because people in New York are so desensitized. You know, you Absolutely. walk by catastrophe every day and you're just numb to it at this point. So, you know, people that are outside of an anarchist group, you can just walk by a protest and you won't even turn your head. You know, you have people suffering on subway trains. You just won't even look up and from your phone. People sometimes. that are killed. And it's just, there's such a high level of desensitization Absolutely. that... I found it's a contradiction. that you have to bring art into it to really, I've noticed when we've done more art pieces combined with protests, people have much more intrigue and they'll come up and ask questions and there's much more discussion and conversation with just the people. Um, yeah, and for I haven't, example, yeah. when it was like in, in Amazon, you know, was when Bolsonaro, this fascist, was there in put fire and minerals, you know, fucking with everything in Brazil. I mean, we care a, a tree. Talk about this performance. Um, yeah, we yeah, had, um, and also the abolish, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> uh, one yeah. thing at a time. Uh, yeah. We had a, a tree that we put on wheels and the tree was burning. And this was like in the very, in 2020, when the Amazon fires were sort of just progressing and we carried it from uh, uh, Brooklyn all the way to Times Square and um, over the Brooklyn Bridge and then we got there there was a protest with Extinction Rebellion um, and, and many other groups many, and yeah. then we uh, you know we create a kind of uh, noise but there's a level of intimacy to it because when you're walking all that way because it's maybe like six miles seven miles from oh, yeah, where from we went to, uh, to, to, to carrying Square. this tree and yeah. you know people were surprisingly intrigued because it's it was so out of the ordinary i mean we looked like dead we were in like hospital gowns <laughs> and like, like our faces were burned yeah, and yeah really so it, it's it's strange that you have to like, sort of go to that level to actually spark like a minimum amount of interest which is at the same time huge in the city but it adds another level of energy and passion to it at the same time yeah, Are and we, an art, yeah. art lab is about collective creation. I mean, we don't have one artist. We have like a group of arts. Like also we do this in the book fair, you know, we pick participation from many levels, many kind of people, the more diverse possible, better. I mean, this year we talk about uh, abolish police, no? We really listen Black Lives Matter and all the struggle that they have been doing and we support and we collaborate uh, hours with Black Lives Matter and then the, this year will be abolished police and uh, e equal uh, like you no know, equal with uh, 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 building alternative justice you know and community yeah. justice also I mean that's that is this year our discussion you no know? yeah okay so um, it really sounds like the main strategy you're doing with this whole art anarchist movement is trying to break the everyday, the ordinary, and really get people thinking about social issues. But are there also like, maybe you can also touch a bit on what subcultures are involved with the art anarchist movement, but also like, uh, are there other like more traditionally organized anarchist groups that you are working with, like maybe an anarcho-feminist group or an anarcho-communist Federation? Is there also like anarchist union work done in New York City? Can you maybe tell us a bit about this also? Sure. I mean, uh, we work with, we try uh, a coalition with many groups possible, but we try to to focus in anarchism, you know, more than, I mean, feminism is like without feminism, we don't have anarchism, my perspective, like also about all the 
queer question. I mean, we bring all the queer trans inside the anarchism in New York too. You know, it's a big discussion. Like today we present here like a workshop about architecture and the body and um, a language in, you know, in Saint-Simier. I mean, and was amazing. I mean, that kind of discussion we need to really transform, include anarchism, you know, be like a like punctual and uh, accurate what's going on that that we are. because for example you see many anarchist groups like male dominant you know or white dominant and we really intentional we want to break that and we want to bring it the more diversity of kind of people possible for example last year we work together and collaborate with indigenous in brazil you know uh, that was a work by, by the by the Anarcho Art Lab and the International Art Solidarity. That's a group we just created. We work together with like a heavy metal band called Gojira. is a French heavy uh, metal band, and then we we did a huge campaign show how it looks like Amazonia now, you know. And we met in New York. I mean, that's New York is about also how you met kind of different culture, different background, different people, and how we do this collaboration through art. That I think is incredible, you know, and we do a lot. And then we do, we, we like donate like um, 300000 dollars and then we build 20 healing houses in Amazonia, you know. And then it's a kind of how we can collaborate in this international solidarity through art. You know, I mean, we care a lot about art and anarchism. And I think it's also just a lot of radical acceptance. I mean, there, there are many, many different. different anarchist groups and more traditional ones in New York. I wouldn't say we're that tremendously involved with them. Sometimes we collaborate with them, but yes. more like... It, they have their own world going on <laughs> and at huge events will all come together. But I also think like if somebody asks to participate, we always say yes. It yeah, doesn't, always. there's no doesn't criteria at all. all it, if there's a couple, yeah, like we've always. had people that we've met that day, especially with non grata that will perform with us. We've had doctors, lawyers, like service people of all walks of life that you know, we'll spontaneously cross paths with and in, invite them to this, to like a night of, you know, performance or a protest. And suddenly, like, they're doing it for years now, yeah. you know, it's, it's, or some shift in their head turn. I, was, what is the saying? There's some shift in their mind <laughs> that occurs just from that moment. Yeah. Uh, am I being articulate? Yeah. yeah, I think uh, I think we get the idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we, we, we work with collective creation. We yeah. want everybody participate. Everybody thinking. We love coalition. We love strategies. We love get together and we think more. We get together more. We can articulate is better. You know, in any level, you know, include art and films and music and we, we really care about art. It's a different like in conscience way to work too. Hey, but uh, from what I like, got from uh, you hinted it a bit that New York City is really, really like splintered and clustered, and it seems like there are a lot of different smaller political circles. I mean, it makes sense. It's one of the largest cities in the whole world, and uh, with more different people, no? and like diversity is a lot yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Extremely diverse and deal with that is amazing in the end. You know, I mean, for example, I born in Brazil and I lived there 23 years because I was I have lost two friends, was murdered because the queer and trans condition, you know, in Brazil. And then I moved to New York and but deal with this difference, deal with this incredible challenge and amazing. And we all deal with that because we are always from everywhere, you know. And this is amazing to know how to operate in this situation. No? How do you feel? Even when sometimes we do so much difference, you know, <laughs> from Brazil, from Russia, from everywhere. You know? we, we come from France or Chile. Or how do you feel about that? I mean, You're I like American, <laughs> <laughs> like born there I know. in the empire. But I think when we come together, it's our energy itself that is the weapon or yes. the tool. So it, that's what it is. It's that moment of 
presence, that moment where suddenly we're all just sort of yeah, melt. melting together melting and we're together. into when in one organism. I feel like all of these separate categories, they just dissolve. Yeah, exactly. And this is the heart of what we're trying to reach is like this moment when you forget about all of these separate Absolutely. backgrounds and it's all just suddenly we are we're all craving the same thing and we're all everything we're after is just this feeling and but bring the difference yeah. like like black lives matter you know exactly. when you come with occupy wall street you know what i mean we know we focus we target but uh, this is exactly what happened you know and i, I think it's amazing so it's this collective feeling of really becoming be becoming a collective a revolutionary utopia in this moment. Absolutely. And also we, we, we need to consider that we are in the empire. <laughs> but the question is also how to sustain that feeling because you can have like a, a beautiful performance or protest and yeah. you feel euphoric and bliss with connection. But how do you sustain that so it actually yeah. creates benefits for everybody? That's the question I struggle with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's like two sides of a coin. On the one hand, you're like in the belly of the beast, and on the other, it's Absolutely. like this uh, like this whole world coming in, day. whole Absolutely. world they're coming together you to really change it, to yeah. work against it. But maybe then, in the end, I would like to know if, with all this splintering, all this um, clustering in the city, like probably also a lot of problems with like coming together and like connecting all the different communities and political movements, are there like really large social issues that are really just impacting everyone in New York City, like for example, the extremely, extremely expensive, expensive housing or police brutality. Yeah. And maybe you can tell us a bit about these large social issues and also the groups or movements that are trying to change it. Mm. Sure, I mean, uh, we, 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 when happened like Black Lives Matter, we really got the level of police brutality, and also we deal also with drug story hours or the fascists literally go inside the libraries and try to disrupt the queer, the queer stories. You know, it means we 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 know how much could be the fascism there, you know, and the police brutality protect them and clear. That's obvious and clear, you know. It means that's a struggle that at the same time, sometimes we fight because difference, but at the same time, unify. You know, it's, it's like you say really well, it's like a contradiction intense that you need to deal with all the time to manage that in the best way to keep going. We need to keep going, yeah. I think also like when you, you the, the concept of all of the clusters, I think to, From my perspective and what I hope everybody is here with, you know, concern of abolishing the police and figuring out new alternatives for housing. But when you have so many people in so many different webs, sometimes conflict arises and it's so far away from what the cause is and why we're here. I mean, that's with any group of people. Once you have so many minds, like yeah. tension always inevitably occurs. So I think that sometimes can bring anarchist groups in New York off track. But at the same time, like this is where, like th these issues are huge. Uh, it's, we're getting, you know, the amount of people that are leaving New York. It's a revolving door to begin with, but it, it's just striking how many. I, like, so many of my friends aren't there anymore. So people are constantly leaving because you just can't afford it. And if you do afford it, and you're not, you know, um, uh you're in working class, you're working like 40 plus hours a week and it's just a miserable life where there's no time for pleasure or connection and there's this whole, New York, like there's this justification we always make of like, oh well I work and I live this life because I'm in New York. <laughs> but it's like at what cost? And you that vision of it's all worth it because I'm in this city, I'm in this location, there's really not much weight behind that argument I think um, I mean we're still there it is I think it's the people there that make it worth it at the end it's not like having museums in Central Park or you know restaurant like all of the the glamour that it's 
uh, marketed with, but it's really just the people there. But they're li you just kind of you can live in New York for so long and realize that you don't want to be there. Not well, to be can, cynical, you not but be <laughs> I mean, but you have yeah, many you have alternatives. To, alternatives. Yeah, you need to be man. really creative you to, to, you yes. know, and take, get together and create and fight and, you know, do the best you can for survive there. You have to learn. How also, to if you're immigrant, yeah. so you know, the immigrant mm -hmm. was crazy situation. Like, you know, I'm an immigrant there, mm -hmm. and I know that. I mean, I, I do many crimes. I'm immigrant, queer, trans, you know what I mean? Anarchist, yeah, yeah. artist, so many crimes at the same time. It's like, but, but like I say, it's like, uh, you know, I think when we leave Brazil, where I come from, it's like face the empire inside them. It's a kind of interesting strategy. Hmm. I think you summed it up. It's just, if you live there, you search for an alternative. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Another thing is like how you live the alternative now. Mm -hmm. Fantastic last words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you really a lot because I think. Sorry if you don't speak too much. Yeah. We, I feel like we didn't answer any questions. No, no. <laughs> We're like two I'm hours so of sorry, sleep. Guys, <laughs> yeah, with beer and like yeah. sleep deprivation. Yeah. So, uh, okay. I think uh, I think the thing is you answered the question, but you also touched on so many different issues because for a lot of German people, it's pretty unimaginable like living in New York City it's always like it seems extremely artificial and like dreamlike and you get so much media about New York City but it's really hard to imagine how the everyday life there is and also the everyday struggles and political fights that are taking place there so that's why I'm really also thankful you need to deal how you survive there and fight at the same time mm. and try to destroy the empire and the capitalism mm. that's our mission like anarchists Inside the beast. <laughs> Inside the belly yeah. of the beast. Just through yeah. art, I tell you. Just through art and then we can survive. Because otherwise we are like, you know, we need to do that. To pass like invisible. Yes. Well, then I'm wishing all the best to the comrades in New York City. And um, if, I, if, I'm ever, <laughs> if I'm ever able to visit New York City again, I will... You have a place to stay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Um, I will. Yeah, I will really uh, try to plan it around your New York City Anarchist Book Fair. I would really 15, be happy to 17, see. It. it will be 16, 17, uh, 2023 in La Plaza Community Garden. I mean, now we are, we are in, a, in a community garden. By the way, one thing we're building in, 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 in New York is a lot of community garden. And we think this is really strategy because you plant food, you grow community, you know, it's like a place to get together. I suggest community mm -hmm. garden. I mean, then, then the book fair now moved from uh, uh, Judson Memorial Church, that was crazy, but I know it's a kind of alternative church, to the community garden that we like uh, just mm -hmm. on the risk of the rain. And the 17th will be virtual, so yeah. people from oh, anywhere, you don't have to be in New York. To, yeah. You don't need to be in New York. You exactly. Can be wherever you can participate. Okay, then we will uh, maybe also try to incorporate a link down there in the info box so you can attend it virtually. Well, again, okay, thanks you a lot, you both, you. and all the best. Okay. Thank you so much. Look off. <laughs>